Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. This time we're looking at something from Gamdas. It is the Aurora GL240 V2 All-in-One Liquid Cooler. Wow, that's quite a mouthful. So, we're back with another AIO. This is the Aurora GL240 V2 from Gamdas. Let's get this open and have a look at the AIO, shall we? Okay, the wrapping's off it now. Let's have a look at this. First of all, you do have a package content tells you everything else included, included the overall what thermal paste, the overall standoff for LGA 2011, uh, 1700 AM4, AM5, AM3, and then it just tells you how to do the thermal paste, and that's the make sure you take that off, of course. That is the peel off for the underneath of the AIO. So, in terms of the overall accessories, that is the overall accessories there. Comes with everything you need. So, yeah, that's it for that. Let's get the AIO out and have a look, shall we? go okay so let's get this off first and then we'll get this off the fans are connected through a proprietary cable unfortunately but it does actually come off to a four pin pwm as well as an argb connector the overall uh, well the overall aio itself is just standard with a glow in the front but there through this and then, of course, there's the base plate, but there, copper base plate. Looks like a Acetec branded pump, but I'm not 100% sure. It also comes with this little switch. Uh, what is that for? Unless it's for the LEDs, I don't know. So, let's get the overall specifications. Okay, so, when it comes to the overall pump the pump speed is 2600 rpm the connector is a three pin i wish it was a four pin because then it'd be able to be controlled otherwise this is just dc connector the overall radiator dimensions are 276 by 120 by 27 27 millimeters being the thickness of the radiator itself now when it comes to the overall tube material tube material is epdm the copper base plate is copper with aluminium fins then of course then it comes from the rated voltage of 12 volts that's for the pump now for the overall fans which is these the overall fans are 120 by 120 by 25 that's the overall thickness the overall rpm does go down to 800 rpm up to 1800 rpm the overall airflow they rated for a cfm of 73.6 cfm with an air pressure of 2.12 h to with the overall decibel level we will check that as well they rated for 33.8 decibels does have a hydraulic bearing that is for the overall fans and the it's a 12 volt rated with a 5 volt ARGB. So let's get this installed, shall we? Okay, so this is the Gamas GL240 V2 AIO. I'm going to put the microphone up towards the fans at 50% fan speed and pull away. Can barely hear it. Same thing, but at 100% fan speed. Now, 
Now, yes, you can definitely hear it now at 100% fan speed. Okay, then. So when it comes to the overall benchmark, you know, I've used my normal run of tests, Cinebench R23, Blender Pavilion, Blender Classroom, and 3D Mark CP test. Now, the reason why I use these particular benchmarks, because each single benchmark will hit the CPU differently in through each test. So that is why I particularly picked these ones. Now, I've done two different types of tests with my 5900X CPU. I've done it with default settings and then with PBO enabled. So default 5900X, the CPU was drawn 145 watts during each test. And for the overall room temp, it was 16.5 and it did go up by two Celsius. So that's the room temp. Now, when it comes to Cinebench, Cinebench R23, the idles 26 with a max of 61. Blender Pavilion, idles 26 with a max of 60. Blender Classroom, idles 26 with a max of 60. 3D Mark CP test, idles 26 Celsius with a max of 65. Now, when it comes to the 5900X with PBO enabled, now remember, this is going to make the, the overall CPU clocks go up as well as the power draw. So that's why I record the power draw what it goes up to during the test and then what it goes down to as well and then of course i do also record the overall cpu frequency because that would give you a good indicator that if it go if it stays boosted for a long time then it's good but if it doesn't then of course that's where the temperature starts to rise so for cinebench r23 now the cpu was drawing 207 watts at the time of testing each run now that was the beginning mind you and it did go down to 193 watts the cpu clock speed was 4.9 during the test first of all but they go down to 4.3 it's well well above base clock so you're not losing any performance so cinebench r23 idles 27 with a max of 83 celsius blender pavilion idles 27 with a max of 80 Blender Classroom idles 27 with a max of 79 and 3D Mark CP test idles with a 27 Celsius with a max of 72 Celsius. Okay, and so first of all, what I'm going to give you out first of all is the good points. One is the price. This is £47. Pound. 47 British pounds. How they got this for £47, pound, I will never know. Because Thermal Right, which is known for quality as well as bargain prices, is more. It on this now, the £47. I make sure I put the little picture here that I took a screenshot of. £47. That's just nuts. The other thing, performance was actually good. I like the mounting system. I've always liked the four-point mounting system when it comes to AOs because that does give you better pressure when you are tightening it down. So that's good. There's two things I don't like. One is that the, the cables that come off the fans, that is a proprietary cable. I don't like that. I understand why, for cable management reasons, but you could easily do it a different way, like Inwin or other manufacturers have two PWM connectors, but have one that comes over like a, like a, like a pigtail connector on it. So then you're just doing it one by one. It's a lot easier that way. And of course, then you haven't got to worry up about a proprietary cable. That's one. The other issue then, of course, is this little switch you get that's attached to the pump for the RGB on the housing. I don't understand why a basic ARGB connector or cable would have done the same purpose, but that befaffles me. But I don't know. <laughs> Unless, of course, Gamdas, when they do see the video, and they will be watching, if they can give me a bit of feedback why they did a little switch, then thank you. I don't understand, but I think for £47, it performed well. It looks good. And yeah, there's only two issues. They're not issues with it themselves. Just my little opinions, my nitpicks at the product. And other than that, it gets my stamp of approval when it comes to performance as well as the price. £47. Yeah, like I said. 47 pound 47 pound that's fantastic okay so yeah the price 47 pound it definitely gets my recommendation for the price and it performed very well so it definitely gets my welshy tech stamp of approval if you want to buy it i will make sure to put a link in the description a big thank you to gamdas it's nice to actually work with you let's hope 
this collaboration continues. I'd love to check out some of your other products, like the new AIO, the new fans you've just come out with, maybe one of your cases. I'd love to check them out. Do a PC build. Doesn't necessarily have to be a review. Could be a PC build, showcase, anything like that. So you know who I am, you know, hit me up. But other than that, gets my stamp of approval and as always make sure you subscribe because i've got loads of stuff here but i've got loads of stuff coming from kit uh sit or kit that is another brand then i've got stuff coming from comet yes that's a big announcement i'll be working with comet they'll be sending me products to review for you guys so yeah more stuff from thermal right to grizzly i got loads of stuff here it's just not funny anymore my stuff it the house my house just keeps piling up with stuff but yeah make sure you subscribe as always this is rich for welsh tech i really do appreciate you guys watching my videos giving me thumbs up and commenting i want as much activity when it comes to the videos i want your feedback i want you guys to tell me what you want when it comes to the overall content and as always I hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you. This is Richard from Wild Sheet Tech. Good. Bye.